Top 10 King Charles Red Flags Meghan Markle Exposed to the Media Starting off with number 10, Frosty Royal Life Ever since the couple left the royal palace, Meghan has been exposing Prince Harry's side of the family. What was life really like inside the palace? A little frosty according to the American. Meg still finds it weird that no one hugs and thinks everyone is uptight, especially Kate. She said it's obvious that Kate and William do not approve of their choices and that you could cut the tension with a knife. A source claimed that the Duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex rarely interacted during Meg's final trip as a senior royal and reportedly even avoided making eye contact. Whatever happened between them must have been serious because avoiding eye contact? is next level shady. Rumors of a rift between the two duchesses have been dogging the royal family for some time now. However, this damaging narrative really started to take root in 2019 when Markle guest edited the September issue of British Vogue. She neglected to put Middleton on the female forces for change list featured in her issue. Sounds shady to me. Describing the early years of her daughter's childhood, Doria recalled repeatedly being asked if she was the nanny as her daughter's skin was lighter. Her mother said, as a parent, in hindsight, I would absolutely like to go back and have that very real conversation about how the world sees you. So when Meghan became part of the royal family, she was not used to experiencing extreme levels of racism, which really helped their decision to move to LA. On to number nine, issues with the family. As we've seen the Duchess of Sussex become one of the most watched women in the world, we've also seen everything Meghan has done and all the fair and unfair criticism she has been receiving. Royal fans used to love fawning over Meghan's stunning outfits, the adorable photos of her gorgeous son, baby Archie, and how much the couple adore each other. So when they made the decision to step down, and every moment after that, not only did this cause a whirlwind of hate towards Markle, but it was quite humiliating for the royal family to watch all the attention and backlash that was caused. This also caused relations to sour between the dukes and duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex. And as happy as they seem in pictures together, it comes as no surprise that there have always been issues between Kate and Meghan and eventually William and Harry. The past few times the brothers have spoken was strictly regarding business. It's crazy to see how fast disagreements can cause rifts between families and friends, and although we may not know the full story, it's quite embarrassing to see these royal adults having these constant battles that go to extreme measures twisting the truth. On to number eight, making headlines. In November 2018, Harry and Meghan made headlines for moving to Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. Sources told us in December 2018 that Meghan struggled with royal rules regarding the press after she made headlines when her personal assistant Melissa Tubati and secretary Samantha Cohen quit six months after the pair's wedding. It's just been frustrating and stressful to have no voice, a royal insider told us. She's always relied on her own voice to stand up for others and for herself, so not being able to say anything is a debilitating feeling. She's always been so independent her entire life and that's all been taken away from her. She's always been able to clap back on social media and now she can't. There were also reports at the time that palace staff didn't trust Meghan. While one staffer reportedly said she comes with a lot of baggage, another employee was allegedly overheard referring to her as Harry's showgirl. Yikes. It doesn't seem many took a liking to Meg when she arrived. But after trying to deal with all the media and actions inside the palace, the couple then found their home in LA and soon enough became quite the rebellious pair. After she had sued tabloids, she criticized the royal institution for not taking action. Number seven, not caring about Meghan's issues. After news of their relationship broke, Meghan recalled how quickly she became the focus of photographers and the media. The royal family considered the intrusion almost a workplace hazard, according to Harry. As far as a lot of the family were concerned, everything that she was being put through, they had been put through as well. So it was almost like a rite of passage. But Harry clarified that the difference is the race element. The royal couple considered revealing the identity of the person who made racist remarks about their son Archie's skin tone. But they decided that sharing that detail was a bad idea. Marco told Winfrey that it would be very damaging to them but I still do want to know who it was. Comment below who you think it would have been. During the sit down conversation, the Duchess of Sussex did say, however, that the unnamed royal asked how dark their first unborn child would be. 
When Oprah asked Harry if he was okay with identifying that person, he said, That conversation I'm never going to share, but at the time it was awkward. I was a bit shocked. But he did clarify that it was not Queen Elizabeth or her late husband, Prince Philip, who inquired. Queen Elizabeth did not watch the couple's primetime prime time interview, but it has caused quite a bit of backlash on the royal family's reputation. A Buckingham Palace staffer told the authors, There is a feeling that if it's ignored, it'll go away, but surely by now, they should have learned that never happens. The royal family was also quietly pleased that the Duchess couldn't make it to Prince Philip's funeral in April, since she was heavily pregnant with her second child, Lilibet Diana, and unable to travel. They reportedly fear that she would create a spectacle if she was there. Ouch. The drama between the Sussexes and the royal family has been going on for a while. Every time I find out a new piece of info, it feels like the drama is probably worse than they let on. But on to number six, unsupportive of Charles's son, Harry. Many of the prince's extended family members have kept relatively quiet about the drama, but both Charles and William have been hurt by Harry's words. The late monarch even tried to mediate the situation. A source claims with the way things are going, Charles may never forgive Harry, which hasn't gone down well with Elizabeth. She felt that he was putting his pride before the best interest of the monarchy. When the couple announced their plans to take a break from their senior roles in January 2020, the news came as a big shock to those closest to them. Prince William was blindsided by Harry and Meghan's decision and statement. William is incredibly hurt, but at the time he has his own family to focus on and is trying to move forward with his own life. Before Harry and Meghan settled down in California, the Duke of Sussex attended a series of meetings with his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, and had a heart-to-heart -heart about the situation. Nearly one year after their initial step away, Buckingham Palace confirmed that Harry and Meg were not going to return as working royals, but this also led them to claiming that they felt a lack of support and lack of understanding from the firm. Number 5. Press and Paparazzi Harry has been very vocal about the media's role in his family life, starting with footage taken outside the hospital following his birth. Of the ongoing attention throughout his childhood, he recalls the majority of his memories are of being swamped by paparazzi. As a child, he had to learn how to handle the attention. He later talked about how his mother, the late Princess Diana, rest in peace, did a really good job in trying to protect her kids and would even confront the paparazzi. Footage of family ski holidays was included to highlight this. Being a royal and all, I get why people would want to know what you're up to, but having cameras follow you everywhere, even against your will? That's an exhausting life for sure. Would you be able to handle it? On to number four, unconscious bias. In contrast to Meghan's experiences growing up mixed race, Harry said that there was a huge level of unconscious bias in the royal family. The thing with unconscious bias is actually no one's fault, but once it's been pointed out or identified within yourself, you then need to make it right, he said. Number three, the royals don't hug. Big shocker. Meghan recalled meeting Prince William and his wife Catherine over dinner, oblivious to royal protocol. She said she was barefoot and wearing ripped jeans at the time. She described herself as a hugger, but said that this can be jarring for some British people. Like I understand not wearing any shoes in your house, but completely barefoot can be a little too much, especially in front of guests. Hopefully Meghan knows for next time to wear slippers or even just some socks. During her 16-day South Pacific tour, Markle sported several different looks and unfortunately suffered some wardrobe malfunctions along the way. But there was one particular feature included in her attire that royal etiquette experts took issue with. She wore a white tuxedo dress during an event in Wellington. The outfit drew praise from fans, but royal experts were critical of the relaxed look. Markle was captured on camera several times with her hands inside her pockets, a gesture Hansen said was inappropriate for Duchess. There is good casual and there is bad casual. Placing a hand in the pocket is too relaxed and unprofessional. The etiquette guru said it's not too much of a fashion faux pas, though he suggested she avoids tempted fate by opting for dresses and other clothing without pockets in the future. Will the world end? No. It's just a small blip in Meghan's usually delightful manners that can be easily corrected for future engagements, Hansen told a British newspaper. Number two, The Journal. Meghan Markle's aides were terrified of what she might say after only one podcast episode was released. However, following her in-depth cover interview with The Cut, new concerns have been raised regarding the Duchess of Sussex's potential speech and the royal family's impact. The journal she kept while working as a royal, which she told The Cut she found when she returned to the UK for a 
Jubilee is a particular point of contention. And although Megan didn't say anything else about the journal or its contents, it probably talks about her negative time with the royals in England. When it comes to the royals, it appears that there is already some concern regarding the exist existence of this journal and the possibility that it will be published. According to a source who spoke with The Sun, Harry and Meghan were told to ignore newspapers and social media, but sometimes staff would say to them, so sorry about what was written the other day, and she would hit the roof. As a form of protection, she recorded everything in her diary. It would undoubtedly be a dynamite weapon if it ever came into existence. This journal appears to have been rediscovered this summer, packed and sh this journal appeared to have been rediscovered, packed and shipped back to Montecito. The revelation that Megan rediscovered what she was writing in her journal at Frogmore Cottage must trigger warning signals to the royal family. A royal expert and author, Margaret Holder, told the outlet. She went on to say that the Duchess had enough time in the royal fold to learn secrets, some of which were decades old, which could cause the monarch and the family embarrassment and heartache, but could earn a fortune for Meghan. Who knows what kind of team Meghan has on the royals, and more importantly, on King Charles. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And on to number one, fitting in. Before taking a break from her royal duties in January 2020, Meghan Markle broke down in tears because of how hard she tried to fit in. The former suit star admits, I tried so hard in the second half of Harry and Meghan, which was released on Netflix. She continues, that's the part that's so triggering because you still don't fit in and it wasn't good enough. In the documentary, Markle talks about leaving England and says that a man in charge of the plane's crew took off his hat and thanked her for everything she did for the country. It was the first time that I felt like someone saw the sacrifice. Not for my own country, but for this country. The Duchess of Sussex recalled, it's not my thing. Markle claims that she fell into the arms of one of Prince Harry's longtime security guards when the couple arrived in Canada. The former star of Deal or No Deal says that she even told the employee of her husband that she tried so hard and he responded, I know you did, ma'am. I know you did. I'm aware you did. But that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.